First, we have the lens, which is a biconvex transparent body situated behind the iris, which focuses on light and on the retina. And then we have the cornea. This is a transparent layer forming the front of the eye, covering the iris and pupil, and it admits light to the interior. This is the pupil. It is the opening of the iris, and it's able to dilate and close, determining how much light gets into the eye. <laughs> this is the iris. It is the contractible circular diaphragm forming the corneal portion of the eye, containing and controlling the opening of the pupil. Here we have the retina. It is a nerve layer lining the back of the eye. It sends senses it senses light and creates impulses to the brain. This is the optic nerve. It is at the back of the eye, and it's a second layer of several pairs of cranial nerves. It transfers visual info from the retina to the brain. This is the blind spot. It is the point at which optic nerve leaves the eye. No receptor cells are located here. And lastly, we have the fovea. It is the central focal point in the retina around which eyes cones clusters. How is light reflected, you ask? Light rays will reflect and pass through the cornea, pupil, and lens. The thickness of the lens brings objects into focus on the retina. Light waves travel in straight lines. The image is then upside down and reversed. Some things to take into account when talking about color are hue, intensity, and saturation. Hue is the dimension of color that is determined by the wavelength of light. It's what we know as the color name, such as blue, red, and green. Intensity is the amount of energy in a light or sound wave, which we perceive as brightness or loudness, as determined by the wave's amplitude. Saturation is the brilliance of inten and intensity of a color. Other things to take into consideration are photoreceptors and opponent process theory. Photoreceptors are a structure in living organisms, especially in a sensory cell or sense organ, that responds to light falling on it. Opponent process theory is a psycho psychological and neurological model that accounts for all a wide range of behaviors, including color vision, and the first proposed one was by Ewald Herring in 1878. There are two types of vision, nearsightedness and farsightedness. Nearsightedness is a condition in which nearby objects are seen more clearly than distant objects because distant objects focus in front of the retina. Farsightedness is a condition in which faraway objects are seen more clearly than near objects because the image of near objects is focused behind the retina. We have the ear. This is the auditory canal, the eardrum, the oval window, the cochlea, the cochlear nerve, the vestibular nerve, the semicircular canals, the stirrup, the anvil, and the camera, which are the three bones inside the ear. What's amplitude? Amplitude is the quality that corresponds to loudness. Hey guys, what's pitch? It's the tone's highness or lowness. <laughs> and it also depends on frequency. Frequency is the amount of wavelengths that pass the point at any given time. The middle ear is the chamber between the eardrum and the cochlea containing three tiny bones, the hammer, the anvil, and the stirrup, that concentrate the vibrations of the eardrum on the cochlea's oval window. The inner ear is the innermost part of the ear containing the cochlea, semicircular canals, and the vestibular sacs. Liesel. Liesel! Liesel! Oh, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I have conduction hearing loss. What's that? Well, it's caused by damage to the mechanical system that conducts sound waves to the cochlea. Alex?
Alex, did you hear that? Alex! I have sense of neural hearing loss. It's caused by damage to the cochlea's receptor cells or the auditory nerves. It's also caused nerve deafness. Well, I just figured out how to trans transform sound waves into nerve impulses that our brain interprets. First, the outer ear funnels sound waves to the eardrum. Then the bones of the middle ear amplify and relay the eardrum's vibrations through the oval window into the fluid-filled cochlea. The hair cell movements inside the ear trigger impulses at the bases of the nerve cells whose fibers converge to form the auditory nerve. Hey Emily, what's pain? Pain is a sensation that hurts and can be steady or constant. It's also very individual to everybody. Are there different types? Yeah, two, acute and chronic. How is it felt? Through sensory signals transmitted from the injury to nerves through the spinal, through the spine to the brain. And the brain interprets, interprets the signal as pain and sends it back to the signal. What are some causes of pain? Well, some include damage to nerve fibers, burns, pinched nerves, or physical injury or disease. What are some influences? Um, someone's surroundings or the severity of an injury. <laughs> what are the four skin senses? Heat, pressure, cold, and pain. And how do they interact? They all operate through nerve receptor cells, and together all four create the sense of touch. What gate control theory is? Gate control theory is a theory that the spinal cord contains a neurological gate that blocks pain and signals and allows them to pass them onto the brain. The gate is opened by the activity of pain signals traveling up small nerve fibers and is closed by activity in larger fibers or by information coming from the brain. sense and a kinesthetic sense. The vestibular sense is the sense of body movement and position, including the sense of balance. Kinesthetic sense is a system for sensing the position and movement of individual body parts. Temperature relates to thermoception and it's the sense of heat and absence of heat. Time is measured by someone's own perception of the duration of the indefinite and continuous unfolding of events. Olfactory bulb. The olfactory bulb is a brain structure responsible for our sense of smell, which is also known as olfaction. It processes information about odors after receiving sensory input from the nose. Can you tell me the link between smell and memory? The answer is likely due to brain anatomy. Incoming smells are first processed by the olfactory bulb that has direct connections to two brain areas that are strongly implicated in emotion and memory. Five taste sensations. Sweet, sour, salty, bitter, and umami. Can you explain to me what the tongue map myth is? The tongue map is the idea that the tongue is mapped into four areas. One for bitter, one for sour, one for salt, and one for sweet. What is gestation? Gestation is the experience of taste. How is food turned into taste info? Well, first the food touches the taste buds on the tongue, and then the pores catch the food chemicals. Then the molecules, molecules are sensed by the taste receptor cells. The interaction is the principle that one sense may influence another. Smell of food influence taste. Interaction. It is the principle that one sense may influence another. Can you give me an example? The smell of food influence taste. 